Hello and welcome to Arts for the Masses. The arts are alive in Massachusetts and I'm the lucky guy who gets to bring them to you. Now, when I mention the names Gilbert and Sullivan, I'm sure a slew of characters and songs come to mind. From modern major generals to three little maids from school, the operettas of this famous duo have stood the test of time. And one of the main reasons GNS have managed to stick around for so long is thanks to local Gilbert and Sullivan societies. Now, according to the New England Gilbert and Sullivan Society, throughout New England, there are at least 12 groups that perform these classic operas on a regular basis. Now one of these groups is the Sudbury Savoyards who have been presenting Gilbert and Sullivan on a grand scale and keeping the community in community theater for 60 years. And I'd like to welcome Donna Rossler and Lynn Saw, who are both co-producers of the upcoming production of The Grand Duke. Welcome to Arts for the Masses. Thank, Thank you, Ryan. I'm really excited to have you here. Now, for those people who are watching that aren't familiar with Sudbury Savoyards, can you give me a little nutshell of the history of how it all started and how it got to where it is now? Yeah. We actually started um, through the Sudbury United Methodist Church in 1961. Okay. And they were looking to do a fundraiser. So the choir director suggested that they perform trial by jury, which they did in choir robes. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. Nice. And we've been performing every year since then, except for 1965. Wow. Yep. What was that break in 1965? We found out that there was no fire curtain at the town hall, so they would not let us perform. Fire hazard. Yes. And have the performances always been at the town hall? They were for several years, and then um, the cast started getting really large, so we ended up performing at Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School. Wow. And I, except for, I think, a couple year break when we had to perform at Maynard, um, we've been at Lincoln Sudbury. And I'm very curious how you got involved, both of you, and, <laughs> and uh, how maybe your position and involvement has changed throughout the years. Um, well, I started, <laughs> I shouldn't say how long ago, but uh, <laughs> my first year on the stage with the Savoyards was 1973. As a performer? I was in the chorus. Awesome. Yes, and um, I was still in high school then. Um, Soprano, so alto? Soprano. Okay. Yes, all us little maids were sopranos. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've been pretty heavily involved um, since then, except for being in college and taking a few years off. Um, I got back on full time in 1995 with Mikado, and I've been involved ever since, either um, chorus, cast manager, um, costume construction, mm -hmm. costume designing, producing. And for this pr upcoming production, yes. you're doing costumes. I'm costume co-designer and, and co-producer. Awesome, and we have your co-producer with you here, Lynn Sa. Mm -hmm. Lynn, tell me about your involvement and how you got started with Sudbury. Well, I am a member of the pit. That means I'm a member of the orchestra. I play bass, the big tall instrument. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I started back in 2013 with the Gondoliers. And um, so every year, this is something I totally look forward to, playing in the pit. And then two years ago, I retired. I'm a former physics teacher. And I retired, and they said, well, you're retired. You can co-produce. And I thought, OK, <laughs> let's try this. And I have to tell you, Ryan, what a learning experience it has been to all of a sudden co-produce. Well, define that a little bit for, for our audience, what you're doing as a producer. It, it's basically if the show bombs, it's the producer's fault. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, no pressure. <laughs> right. It's, it's everything from um, making sure that you have key people in the technical aspects, like the lining designer, the technical director, and all of that, um, from backstage to front of house, having a house manager, a box office person, making sure that the publicity is happening, making sure the ticket sales are going well, Making sure the cast is happy, sure. the directors are happy. Making sure we have a place to rehearse. Yes. Making sure we have a place to perform. Yes. Um, having COVID policies. Mm. I mean, that all of that yeah. is uh, is on the producer's plate. Right. Well, you both seem pretty confident that that you're <laughs> up to the task. We yes. are. Excellent. Yes. Now, <laughs> now, why Gilbert and Sullivan in 2023? That's a big question. Uh, well, part of it is we are a Gilbert and Sullivan group. 
Mm. So that's part of our charter is that we perform Gilbert and Sullivan, as you said, on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. um, is it still relevant? Is it? Uh, it is. It is. I mean, there's. I think we have a new generation of people finding an interest in Gilbert and Sullivan because it's an operetta. Um, it, it, the music is fun to sing. Mm -hmm. One of the things about our organization is that we don't audition our chorus. Oh. So we're able to get people who might not ordinarily be able to perform community theater yeah. um, to come and have fun with us. So it's a really diverse group of people on the stage. I got to tell you, um, growing up doing musical theater, I wasn't really exposed to Gilbert and Sullivan. And it was only a few years ago that I saw a production of Pirates of Penzance mm -hmm. for the first time. And there's something that's just so special. It's just full of these earworms that get stuck in your head. <laughs> and I said, I, I found myself listening to the cast albums again and again afterwards, mm -hmm. that there's something really magical that this duo was able to yeah. accomplish. And it, some of it is so silly and so funny and <laughs> over the top and dramatic that's it, and, yeah. and the funny rhymes and couplets and characters. But it it, it sucks you in somehow. Well, you said the key word is that there's nothing deep <laughs> about Gilbert and Solomon. It is silly. It's the an entertainment. Are, it's totally entertainment. Yeah. The music, the plot, all of it is totally entertainment. And people, people need that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned that community members can, uh, can be in the chorus and they don't have to audition, but I'm a little curious about the, the leads. Where do they come from? Are we, do we have professional singers? We, um, our leads are amazing, mm. amazing. Um, um, they do sing all over the Metro West area. And we feel honored that they auditioned, they had to audition right. as a lead, and that they are part of performing. But just like everyone else, we, they are not paid. They are doing this voluntarily out of their passion for Gilbert and Sullivan, and also, I believe, out of their just joy of being part of the Sudbury Savoyards. Our leads come from all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, they... And the cast itself. I mean, not only do we have the 11 leads, we have a chorus of almost 30 people. That's a big chorus. And That's they, a lot of costumes you have to figure out. <laughs> and they come from all over, from Lunenburg to Worcester to Cambridge mm -hmm. to Denham. I mean, they are from all over. We are based in Sudbury. We perform in Sudbury. But... People come from all over to be part of the Sudbury Savoyards. Now, one thing that was really beautiful that you told me when we were chatting before the show was once again about the community that you create, mm -hmm. not just a community of actors and a group of pit musicians and backstage crew, but how everyone is encouraged to get to know each other and play together and party with each other and have barbecues. Tell me about this camaraderie that you've established here as part of your, the mission. Well, I play, as I said, in the pit. And many times in, in productions, you have the cast, the crew, and then you have the pit. But in the Sudbury Savoy Yards, they, they want the orchestra members to be, feel a part of the... Absolutely inclusive. Totally yeah. inclusive. And for those who, people who aren't in tune with the way this works, that is an anomaly. It really <laughs> it is. is. A lot of times you're, you're working with a professional union, uh, union musicians, and they come in to do the gig, and they're, they're out of here. But to have this interaction and camaraderie and having people sharing green room spaces backstage is really special. It is special. And, and it's not a small pit. There are 27 members in this pit. It is a full strings, percussion, winds. I mean, it is a full pit. Grand scale. And grand, grand scale, scale. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And um, I just have to share uh, my, my first memory with you, uh, which is, again, as part of the pit. I had played. It was, uh, again, 2013, played for the Gondoliers. It was opening night. The performance ended, and I went backstage into the band room to get my case. And I walked into the band room and I saw the entire cast was there and I assumed they were just having a meeting of some sort. So I stopped and all of a sudden they stopped, they turned around and they just started applauding. 
And they were applauding me as a member of the pit. Mm. And as my colleagues from the pit came in, we were applauded by the entire cast oh. of the Sudbury Savvy Arts. I, I was shocked. That's beautiful. <laughs> shocked. And at that moment, I knew forever <laughs> I was yeah. going to be part of the Sudbury Savvy Arts. Now, maybe there are some people that might have a little stage fright, but maybe the stage is not their thing. Are there other opportunities for community members to get involved? Oh, my, yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. We have, I mean, the set has to be built. Right. That means building, painting, doing the detailed painting of the set. Costumes, mm -hmm. being able to cut out a pattern, so wow. that is, those are skills that we absolutely need. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you get to the productions. We need the backstage crew. We need the house staff, ushering, mm -hmm. um, box office. These are all ways that people who may not visualize themselves on stage can be part of this production of the Savoyards. Right. Yeah. Donna, I wonder if you have any special memories that you'd like to share from, from your time. <laughs> um, well, I know I've fallen off the stage once. No. Uh, I did. I did. It was, it was uh, right before tech week, and I missed a step and Ooh. off sprained my ankle. So wow. that was that. Um, I've, Positive memories. Yes. <laughs> OK. I've, I've done makeup before, and I painted a lead a little orange. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> Um, it's just been the, the whole experience from being on the stage to being um, producing, um, being on the board of yeah. directors. Um, I've been the chairman of wow. the board for a couple of years. It's just um, you can you can go from one experience to the next and just everything is positive yeah. about this organization. Mm -hmm. Now, people might know Pirates, the Mikado, <laughs> but not the Grand Duke. <laughs> What's it all about? And, and has Sudbury Savoyards performed the Grand Duke before? We did it once in 2006. So because there are around 12 shows that we can perform, we try and space them out. The um, rotation. The rotation, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to do the Grand Duke in 2021. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we were not able to do that. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. I know. We don't need to relive <laughs> so those we're memories. We're so no. excited <laughs> that we're actually going to get to do it this year. Um, so it was all cast and ready to go. Have any of those cast members stayed on through all that time and, and are joining the show still 90% of yeah. the cast and the technical staff <clears throat> stayed on wow. from last year. So that was wonderful. And what's the Grand Duke all about? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it starts off with this theater company that's going to perform a Greek tragedy, but its real intent is to overthrow the Grand Duke. So it sounds like this is a serious Gilbert and Sullivan. But no, <laughs> Gilbert and Sullivan is never serious. You know that because the head of the theater company is Ernest Dumkoff. I mean, seriously, a name like that. So what happens in this is that there is the lead comedian who accidentally, inadvertently, tells a spy about this conspiracy. So they have a problem now. So the way that they decide to settle it is they're going to have a duel, but not a duel with guns, because that's, that's not Gilbert and Sullivan. So instead of drawing guns in the duel, they draw playing cards. Oh. And the duel is decided. The comedian, his name is Ludwig, wins the duel. So the stage manager becomes the loser, and he's going to be blamed for the conspiracy. Ludwig has to go off and tell the Grand Duke about the conspiracy. Ludwig is very clever and decides to have a duel with the Grand Duke. Mm -hmm. And whoever wins that duel will become the Grand Duke. Oh. <laughs> Ludwig, he rigs the duel, he wins, now he is the Grand Duke. This sounds like it could be the end of the production. However... <laughs> it's just intermission. Act two. No. <laughs> yeah. However, in every Gilbert and Sullivan, there has to be love affairs, not just one, not just two. There happens to be four in the Grand Duke. And as the plot goes on, you find out by the end of the, well into act two, that Ludwig is now engaged to four <laughs> different women. Now, how does that resolve in a happy way? Because this does have a happy ending. I have to come see the performance. Oh That's the teaser. <laughs> That's what we needed. Oh, perfect. Can you tell me um, how rehearsals are going? Who's on the team? Any? Uh, tell me who we have directing and choreographing. Yep. Rehearsals are great. We're rehearsing three times a week. 
mm -hmm. and um, we did all of the music rehearsing up until the Christmas break, and now we've started doing the blocking and the choreography. Putting it on its feet. Yeah, it, it, yeah absolutely. Um, it's hard work. It's yeah. hard work, but when you leave rehearsal at the end of the night, it, you're just so energized by everything that you've been doing. Uh, we have two wonderful directors. Um, Matt Traigert is our stage director, and he's been on the stage with us a few times. Mm -hmm. And he's also now a, a member of the board. And um, Aldo Fabrizzi, who is a wonderful music director, and he hails from the western part of the state, um, has a lot to do with Worcester um, Opera. Right. Um, so, yeah, so they're heading. So, what can up audiences. Us. I expect you clearly have given us a beautiful synopsis, <laughs> but is this something that maybe that young children might enjoy, or what? What sort of evening are we gonna gonna get at the theater? It is a fun evening. The music is very upbeat. The lyrics, the lyrics are silly. I actually brought one of the vocal scores. I mean, as in this in this production. <laughs> The key, one of the key elements is a sausage roll. <laughs> so look at some of these crazy lyrics. You must eat a sausage roll, a sausage roll, a roll, a roll, a roll, a roll. I mean, this is Gilbert and Sullivan. So the music is fun. The lyrics are fun. The storyline is silly. So in that way, it's totally Escapism. enjoyable. Escapism. Oh, Absolutely. I love that. Escapism. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. And you had said, uh, as a musician, that this piece is a little more challenging than some of the other Gilbert and Sullivan <laughs> pieces. Can you tell me a little bit more about right. what you're seeing in the score? Well, the Grand Duke was Gilbert and Sullivan's last operetta that they uh, produced or wrote together. And the music, they say the music is Sullivan's greatest work. And so it is more difficult. I mean, our, the first rehearsal of the orchestra is this Sunday. And Ryan, I have to practice. This, <laughs> this part, this music has challenging You can practices. usually skate by with some sight reading, uh, but not this one, right? Yes, okay. yes. The and music. It's, it's a lot of people just don't know the show. So they're coming in cold. Right. Yeah. Um, it's things like Pirates and Mikado. They're just ingrained in you somehow. Everybody's yeah. heard it someplace in some format. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Grand Duke is, is not well known. It and has the fun, fast parts, but it has some beautiful moving parts. I mean, it is. And there must be some beautiful love duets with oh, all those love yeah. triangles oh, and yes. qu quadrangles and yes. <laughs> going on. Yes. Our leads' voices are just so beautiful. And, and when you get to hear, two of them together. It's just, it's mm. lovely. It's, it's beautiful. Lovely, yeah. So where can people find out more information and buy tickets? Well, it's on our website, which is www.sudburysavayards.org. And there is a link right there to ordering tickets. Mm -hmm. um, our tickets are $25 for an adult, uh, $22 for a student or a senior, and children under 12 are $12. We also have group rates for groups of 10 or more mm -hmm. um, at $18 per ticket. Great, bring a whole party. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Go out and get a nice dinner beforehand or a drink afterwards. I'm sure there's some great places in, uh, around town. Yep. And Yep, there's some great places in Sudbury you can go. Excellent. It is a little bit of a long show. Okay. So um, I don't know, you had meant, asked about uh, young children. I don't know whether they'd be able to sit still that long, sure. but maybe come to a matinee. Right. And try that. So it's February 24th through March 4th. March 4th, yep. Plenty of opportunities to, to check it out yes. and enjoy some Gilbert and Sullivan, whether it's for your first time or, may, or maybe you're a Gilbert and Sullivan fanatic. You're going to get yes. a treat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on Arts for the Masses. Thank you, Ryan. Thank this you, was Ryan. Great. <laughs> that brings us to the end of another episode. If you're a community theater group, if you're a local orchestra or a dance company, let me know. I'd love to feature you on the show. Take care. Thank you.